Hi everybody, it's Stu, AG6AG. Today, I want to cover setting up audio levels so you can use sound modem and VARA FM more efficiently. That's right, we're talking about how to get those audio levels just right so your packet and your VARA FM is nice and clean and can get as far and receive as far as possible. Now, with all that, you know, it is really important that you understand how to install VARA FM and how to install sound modem. Those are different videos, so make sure you look through my video list at those and take a look at those before you watch this one. Anyway, hey, I have a request. If you could, click the subscribe button for me. It really helps me out, gets me higher rankings in the recommendations and all that good stuff. So we're able to reach more people. And you know what? If you want notifications when we come out with new videos, just click the notification icon. So with all that, let's go ahead and take a look at audio levels. Hi everybody, it's me, AG6AG. And let's get started on how to set up our audio levels when we're using a signal link to use sound modem for packet and uh, VARA FM for wind link, okay? First things first, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the PC here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the start menu. We're going to go down here to Windows System. And under Windows System, we are going to select Control Panel. We want to get to the sound settings, and I happen to like the, uh, I guess, the more complicated sound settings because they have more things that I can correct. Uh, we're going to go in here to sound, and let's get this out of the way so we're not staring at it. <clears throat> what we have here is we have our playback devices, <clears throat> our recording devices, our general sounds, and our communication settings. So let's take a look at the Sounds tab first. I recommend that you turn off all window sounds. In other words, all the things like, uh, you know, if you click on something, it beeps, all that. Uh, turn them off. Set it to no sounds. The reason is that it may try to use that USB audio card that is the signal link. And if you happen to have um, the... Uh, Radio on, you will be transmitting all those strange beeps and boops, okay? So the smartest thing to do is just to turn all those noises off, okay? Um, now, as far as the communications tab, the one on the far side, uh, that's going to be basically uh, set to do nothing. You don't want Windows to change or alter anything. We're going to get even deeper into that in a minute. All right, so let's go back here to the playback tab where it has our speaker devices. The top device here is the speaker that's in the laptop. I basically have chosen it as the default. You can see by the little green uh, check mark. Why do I want it to be the default? Just in case a program decides it's going to play something, which, you know, um, it certainly can, again, it's going to look at the default device. I don't want it going to the signal link. So I'm going to make sure that the local speakers are the ones that we're using. Okay. Um, now, very important. Let's click on the USB audio codec speakers. That's your signal link. Let's look at properties. And we'll start at levels. Now... Typically, you open this up, and without touching it, this thing's at 100%, okay? You'll see a little 100 here in the number place, and this thing will be split all the way over to the side. I mean, it will just be banged up just like that. I like to set mine just to make sure that I don't get any clipping from the actual driver itself at about two-thirds, or about 66. Um... I don't usually mess with the balance. It, it really, you know, in our particular case is kind of irrelevant. It should default to even money as it were. So um, again, your mileage may vary. As far as enhancements, I 
turn off or disable all enhancements that are available. Why? Well, because uh, I don't want the computer drivers trying to change anything in the audio, okay? Uh, also, under advanced, I want to make sure that both these boxes are checked, okay? I want to allow applications to take exclusive control, and I also uh, want to give uh, exclusive mode applications priority. That means that when I send audio, it's going to send the audio. And then, of course, for the... Sp uh, sp boy, I can never get this one. Spatical sound, I uh, actually turn it off. Okay, again, no modifications, all right? Once I'm done with the system properties for this, I move over to the recording tab. And here I've got line in, I've got the microphone array, and I have the line, which is the USB audio codec. I have set the microphone array, which is the microphone that's in the laptop, as the default device by the little check mark here. You just go down and highlight it, and then you click on set as default. I could do the same over here if I wanted to move it to line in, uh, but we'll just leave it here, right? So right now it's set as default. Uh, the line USB codec is the one that we're going to be working with. So I want to highlight that, and I want to click properties. Again, this is our signal link. <clears throat> now, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for listen, and I want to make sure that this is turned off. If you turn this on, it will feed audio back into the audio system, and what will happen is it'll take the noise or the sounds that it's receiving and loop it back into the transmission side, so you don't want to do that, okay? Um, also, on levels... We're doing the same thing, right? We're going to set these to 66. We want it about two-thirds, okay? Now, if this is the only audio adjustment you have, you're not going to be doing any knobs or anything on the uh, signal link. You'll be in these areas trying to set up the two audios that we're talking about by adjusting the volume up and down here. The signal link happens to have, actually, <clears throat> two knobs on it right? <clears throat> you have uh, actually three. You have the delay, which we always put all the way turned off. We have the RX, which we set straight up at 12 o'clock. And we also have the TX, which we also set up straight up at 12 o'clock. All right. Uh, but if you don't have those on the device that you're using, no external volume, you're going to have to do it all inside here. It just means you're accessing it differently and you don't have external knobs to adjust, okay? Anyway, once I've done that, I want to look under advanced and verify that, uh, again, we have exclusive control available for this. And once we get that done, we're all done. Well, not exactly, right? So let's go over here to the radio, all right? So right here on the radio, you're going to notice that I've got my volume at about a, uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, a, what, a quarter up, which would be 9 o'clock, right? I got my volume sitting there. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and test it that, okay? Because the way this actually works is it pulls the audio out of the back of the radio, and that goes around, and that's the audio input into the signal link right? Because we don't have a radio that has a data port. So if I change the volume on the radio, that's going to change things too. So I have to be careful of that. So I'm going to start at about a quarter volume, nice low volume. And I'm going to go ahead and start opening some software. So let's start with, of course, sound modem. Now, <clears throat> If you look at sound modem, let me scooch it over a little so you can see it all and my big me isn't in the way. If you look at sound modem, you're going to see the waterfall down at the bottom, that black area. I am going to turn the squelch all the way down on the radio. Now you see that I'm using the color waterfall, right? Let me show you where you set that up just so you know. Uh, by the way, if 
you don't have this stuff installed or if you need help with the settings, I have other videos that walk you completely installing not only uh, the uh, sound modem software, but installing the WinLink um, uh, Vara FM software. So I encourage you to watch those because there's a lot of settings that you need to make in this when you initially install it. And I'm assuming that you've already done that. Okay. Uh, anyway, if I look at devices, okay, there's a little checkbox right here called color waterfall. I want to make sure that is checked. Now take a look at the color. You see the color on this thing? Uh, the color has tons of yellow and red in it, okay? What we're looking to do is I'm going to go over here to the volume, TX control. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Receive control. And I'm going to turn it all the way down. All right, so all the color goes away. Well, we want some color. So we're going to bring this up watching our waterfall. All right. We want it to be green. We want it to be green. See, this would be, this right here would be too low, right? We want it to be a nice, beautiful color of green. We don't want any yellow or red. Now I'm seeing, oh, that's a beautiful green right there. All right. So if you take a look at where our volume is, okay, <clears throat> on the RX, it's pretty low, but that's a really, really good receive pattern. All right. Now, we'll go ahead and crank our squelch back up, right, till we quiet everything out of it. There we go. All right. I've got a lot of noise here, so let me turn that up a little more. I normally wouldn't have it that high, but... With that, now we've got to set our TX level. So how are we going to do that? Well, we actually need a separate radio. And I just happen to have one off screen that you're going to hear. And we're going to adjust the transmission level using this calibration tool. All right. Calibration tool, and we're on channel A. Okay, so... Ah, and somebody's on the frequency. So let's move up to one that isn't being used quite as much. We, we have some specific ones we use out here. I'm going to shift it up to 145.070. Now, I need to put this on low power. If I don't put it on low power, what's going to happen is I'm going to overload the front end of the radio I'm trying to listen to this with. So I want to make sure I'm putting a minimum amount of power out while I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put a low tone on the radio. Now what you're hearing is you're hearing that tone on my receive side. Now I'm going to go over here to the transmit and I'm going to turn it all the way down. And I'm going to gradually bring it up, and I'm listening to it. And I want it as, not as loud as it can be, but close. So, you see? There's the loudest. Just a little less. Let's try the high tone. We're going to play the same game. All right. Well, where are we at? Well, my goodness. Look at those settings. All right. So, what does that mean for us? Well, that means now we get to go ahead and test it. So let's go ahead and open up Tiny Term, and I'll move this over so we can see both programs. I'm going to switch the radio back to what we use out here in Ventura County for uh, um, oh, uh, digital, and I'm going to, again, set it to low power because I don't want to overpower anything. What I want to do is I want to hear it transmitting against another device I'm connecting to, right? So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to click connect. 
And I am going to connect to TOEOC. And I'm going to go through a Digipeter. That Digipeter is RAS now. And that is the local Digipeter. Now I'm going to click connect. And what I should see is I should see a good exchange all in here. And I should over here actually see a prompt for me to be able to look at messages. Let's give it a try. I am connected. Now I'm going to disconnect. Everything seems to be working really well. All right. Let's connect again. Let's connect to something else. Let's connect to, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, we'll connect to the East County Sheriff's Station out here just to run a test. Let's, let's send a message so we might actually have some tones here. Let's see. Uh, I'll send myself a message. Uh, this is a test. Thanks for watching my video. Oh, wait. I made it so you made it. Oops. And then we'll end the message. And there we go. Did I get it? Is my message there? You know, worked pretty well. Okay, let's go ahead and say bye. We'll disconnect. Now, what about, well, you're going to find this interesting. We're about to talk about uh, VARA FM. First thing I need to do is change to the VARA FM frequency out here. And again, go to low power. So, one of the things that you have to kind of remember here is VARA FM is an amazing, an amazing program for transferring data. We do have a slight problem with it, though, with uh, things like the signal link. Okay, so let me turn the squelch down. So that's behaving just about how I want it to behave, okay? When I say it's behaving the way I want it to behave, I'm seeing it right in between, uh, my goodness, uh, right in between about uh, 10 and 20 dB, really in a good spot, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a transmission test on this, and I do that under settings, under sound card, and I go to auto test. And I'm going to auto test uh, with W6RH, uh, who is our local um, Winlink exchange. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit to send. And there's something very interesting when I try to do this test. I may or may not get an approval on this. Let's see. Approved. All right. So, all of our settings look good, but getting this approval on a signal link can be challenging, and let me explain why. A signal link 
only keys the radio when it's sending audio. Okay? It doesn't keep the radio keyed. Now, we talked about delay a little bit. Well, maybe we didn't. Let's talk about delay. So, I can set delay on this. We'll go ahead and crank it up to about, oh, let's go to 9 o'clock. Watch what happens. What we're watching for is we're watching for it to key. And you're going to see the red push to talk light go on when it keys. And now it stays on. That's what you need to do to get a qualified approval, typically, from VARA FM. I like to run it completely off because when I'm doing packet, it if it doesn't unkey right after that audio signal, it's it's going to be bad. The other station's going to try to answer, and you're not going to receive it because you're still keyed. Okay, it's kind of a timing issue. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show. There we are, a little under uh, looks like a little under nine o'clock on both of them. And uh, just that simple. If you have any questions, let me know. This is AG6AG. You know, it's pretty simple, but eh, there's some little quirks and tricks in there. I hope you got a lot out of this video. I really enjoyed doing it. We had some really fun camera setups and some really, really fun equipment shots that I enjoyed trying to do to make this video a little easier to understand. Anyway, if you have any additional questions or comments, just make them in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Stu, AG6AG. And I just want to say 73, and I hope to hear you on the air.